Hurricane Irma is so powerful, it's registering on devices that detect earthquakes. You can read about it at usatoday.com. This is one of the most intense hurricanes that I've ever seen. Take a look at this, folks. You can see if you go to earth.nullschool.net, wind speeds are reaching 185 miles an hour right now. That means that it is on the high scale, the extreme scale of a Category 5 status. Now, you can see right here, it's on track to go through these islands, the Dominican Republic and Cuba, and then jump up into Florida. Here is directly from nhc.noaa.gov. Now, this specific path might be, how do I put this, the lesser of two evils. Because if it goes in between Florida and Cuba, I would think that there's going to be less of a chance it's going to shoot up the East Coast and hit D.C., Chesapeake Bay, New York City, etc. It might slow down. With that said, I could be wrong. I'm not a meteorologist. Previous forecasts showed this actually not going in between Cuba and Florida, but shooting up the coast, at least the models that I was looking at. And I shared them with you guys. You guys can see them on my previous podcast. So let's say this thing stays as intense as it is right now at 185 miles an hour. This is very close proximity to Turkey Point Nuclear Facility in Florida. And I'm going to share that with you in just a moment. There's two reactors out there, and they've already had problems. I'm going to share with you a couple news clips from recent issues that plant has had. So you can see right now, this is from IntelliCast.com. This is radar. This is showing that it's starting to hit the islands. Now, if we go back, if you look at the current track, let's take a look at the current track. Wait, just look at it. It's definitely going in between Florida and Cuba right here. It's going to get pretty darn close to Turkey Point. Now, with the issues they've already had, what are they doing to protect the citizens, the planet, and biology and life in general from this thing going boom? You can also see weatherbug.com forecasting the same thing. It's forecasting it as a Category 4, though. Once it goes past the Dominican Republic, we'll see if it actually settles down. I certainly hope so. Weatherbug.com. Let me just read a little bit of this to you real quick. Chart topping. Category 5 Hurricane Irma will strike the Leeward Islands and the Greater Andalies over the next several days, bringing dangerous storm surge, destructive wind, flash flooding, and life-threatening mudslides. The major hurricane will likely bring problems to part of the U.S., possibly South Florida, by later this week. Hurricane Irma was located near 17.1 north and 59.8 west, or about 130 miles east of Antigua, about 135 miles east-southeast of Barbuda. Irma's top sustained winds are at 185 miles per hour, making it a severe chart-topping Category 5 hurricane. Irma's minimum central pressure is 926 MB, 27.34 inches of mercury. Hmm. I don't know what that means. Maybe you guys could share that with me. Like I said, I'm not a meteorologist, but I do get 185 mile per hour winds. I'm going to have to Google that and find out what it means. Just take me a minute, but I'll do that later. Your time is important. And I just can't wait to read the comments in the comment section now. You fool, you don't know what mercury means. It's in the vaccines. So you can see right here, there's not that strange radar anomaly that I shared with you guys the other day that showed like this radar anomaly blink at the entire globe. And somebody said that was just insufficient satellite data and I was having too much fun but you can see right there clearly Irma is pissed Irma the goddess of war the goddess of war interesting how Harvey that paved the way blazing iron Harvey blazing iron and then Hurricane Jose let's take a look let's go back and take a look at that for a minute so here's the projection of Irma the goddess of war now let's take a look at Tropical Storm Jose and the track that this is going. Huh. It's interesting. Well, not far behind, folks. Let's look at the visible satellite for a moment. 
It's already starting to hit the islands there. Okay, now these are the U.S. operating commercial nuclear power reactors, according to NRC.gov. You'll notice that there's four reactors in Florida. I think the ones that are in biggest danger of having issues right now is the Turkey Point, where there's two reactors down there at Turkey Point. I'll share that with you here. Turkey Point Nuclear Generating Station. Now... It's located on a 3,300-acre site that's two miles east of Homestead, Florida. In 2002, they extended the operating license for both nuclear reactors from 40 years to 60 years. Now, if you look at some of the opportunities it's had, problems and such, on March... 18, 2017, an electrical fault occurred in Unit 3 or in a Unit 3 switchgear room. So the reactor tripped. Now, if you want to read the unsanitized version of that, I actually read it at Concerned Scientists article. I think it was right here. Turkey Point, fire and explosion of the nuclear plant. All things nuclear. You can read about it. Union of Concerned Scientists. Fire and explosion of the nuclear plant. The event. Right there. A lot of issues, you guys. Now, I also heard that somebody said I can't va validate this yet because I just read a comment about it, but are you in Florida and are you having problems getting water? Because this guy says he can't get water at any of the stores. They're all sold out. So maybe you could just turn on your tap and start filling up water at home. But I'm wondering if that's going to be a, a run. You know, what happens if people can't get clean water? That could be just as bad as, uh, I think it'd be worse, obviously, than not being able to get fuel. It's like, okay, let's beta test these guys. Let's see what happens when they can't get fuel. Let's see what happens when they can't get clean water. Let's see what happens when they can't get groceries or access to cash or access to their bank account. Or let's see what happens when they can't get any power because we have to shut down these reactors and refineries because of these massive hurricanes. And then if you go to the Northwest, people are just being bombarded with wildfires there's dozens of wildfires that are out of control. Montana, Idaho, Utah, California, Washington, Oregon. People are saying blankets of ash. And then I hear reports of a volcano in the Pacific that's going off right now. But don't worry, guys, because if you talk about it and you question it, you're a fear monger. So just go back to your original programming. Let the mainstream media freak everybody out. And if you're in the alternative media, just make happy puppy videos. Because those are the ones that get the, the 50 million views anyway. Oh, look at that cute kitten. Oh, oh, it got scared. Look, it's, it's jumping away from a cucumber. You ever see it? With, I got to admit, the one's pretty funny where they'll, they'll put a cucumber next to a cat. And when it sees it, if they, if they sneak up on it, it like bounces away and it freaks out. I mean, things like that will get 50 million views, 100 million views. Although when you're talking about possible reactors flooding on the coast because of a Cat 5 or Cat 4, projections of a Cat 4 when it reaches that area. Oh, yeah, you know, that might get a few thousand views. But, man, there's stuff that's more important. I mean, that cat is just so cute. And besides, we got basketball, we got lots of football, baseball, 657 pound life, Communist News Network. <laughs> anyway, just be aware. Like, if you're on the coast right now, I mean, hey, 
I might weather the storm. I might be like, forget this. I'm staying just to see what happens. But I'll tell you what, I would have enough resources so nobody would be coming and saving my ass. No thanks. If I, if I was going to weather the storm, I would weather the storm. And I would make sure that I had plenty of supplies, clean water, and protective measures. I don't think people that are close to me would appreciate that. They'd be like, come on, let's get out of here. I'd be like, you guys go. I'll get you condo. One thing that's pretty cool is I do have this membership where if I need to, you know, take a vacation or if I need to go away for a few weeks and stay in a condo and I don't want to stay in a hotel, I can get condos for cheap, like 40, 50 bucks a night. Nice ones sometimes. Not everywhere, but it works out more often than not. And some of these guys are spending two, three, four grand a week for the same condo that I'm picking up for like three, four hundred bucks. So that helps me with my traveling. And I'm still strongly considering going to Houston and getting some footage out there and the coast. I could probably get a good deal on a hotel out there, huh? Or I could just stay in Frankenstein. It would be interesting to weather out a storm like that. Now, with that said, if you're in a house and there's going to be a Cat 5 storm, I'm not going to stay in a house that a Cat 5 storm is going to throw the house off, you know, like into, into the ocean or something. I'd have to have something strong enough to withstand the initial storm. Otherwise, yeah, I'm out of there. I'm not going to stay through that. I've also been tempted a couple of times to head on up to South Dakota and stay out there for a few weeks at least during these opportunities that seem to be hitting the coast and the Northwest. Because the Northwest is getting blanketed in ash, literally. People's cars are blanketed in ash. Some people think that it could be a volcano. Maybe it's just the wildfires. Maybe it's a combination. A ton of wildfires, though. You can barely see in some places in Idaho, out in the horizon. It's like silver haze. That's what I was seeing when I went out there last time, more than the chemtrails. It's even worse now. South Dakota, pretty safe place. So, if you're interested in a bunker in South Dakota, get a hold of me. Because I've worked out a deal with Vivos where there's an option if you don't have a ton of money right now, but you want to have a survival insurance type setup, get a hold of me. Because I've worked something out to where if you're paying with cash, you'll get a discount or a three-year lease right now. If you finance for three years, I think it's like $610 a month. And these things are about 2,000 square feet. They're in a very remote location, but not so remote that it would take you five hours to get to a, sto a grocery store. I've been there. I've seen my bunker. Vivos is in the process right now of finishing up the touches on the water system out there because if you end up buying a bunker or purchasing a spot out there at Vivos, Vivos will supply water. So that's good to know because it is a remote area. You know, I'm thinking about going out there and just waiting to see what happens after September 11th, maybe even September 23rd, because personally, I think we're going to be okay with the September 23rd situation with all these weather, with all these extreme weather events that are showing up. I'm starting to wonder whether or not it's man-made or, you know, it's by divine power, whether it's by the hand of God. There's a lot going on with the weather. And it's like, when does it get to a point to where, okay, there's so many signs, there's so much out there saying it's time to prepare that you just either have to do it or it's too late. When does it get to that point? I don't want to be like those people that are like waiting for somebody else to do it. You know, I want to be completely prepared, have everything in order, so when it does happen, like a thief in the night... I'm ready. I'm not having to rely on anybody. I'm not having to ask for anybody's help. I'm not having to even consider doing anything stupid. I'm not going to be in that fight or flight mode. I'm going to be prepared. 
mentally, physically, spiritually. You have to have all of that. Supplies help. Directions, game plans, alternative ideas, being creative, thinking on your feet, all that stuff helps. Being in good health helps as well. Exercising, eating right, thinking right. And if one of these reactors has a huge leak or floods and they can't provide enough power, because most reactors, if they don't get power within a few, I mean, there's pl- every reactor that I know is going to have an alternative source of electricity and power to keep it cool. But what happens if the alternative source of power loses its power? If these reactors don't get power, some of these reactors, if they don't get power to stay cool within four hours, guess what they do? They malfunction. They go into meltdown. They start melting down. They're ticking time bombs. It's not like just one nuclear weapon going off. It's like a nuclear weapon going off over and 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 over. It's not good. And they've got 99 nuclear reactors in the States. Commercial reactors. And let's pray that the reactors withstand this and nothing happens to the reactors. What happens to the people when they start losing their minds? How many people live in Florida? Especially in big cities like Miami. What are they going to How many of them are prepared? What are they going to do? I mean, Houston's still a mess. And it's way better in Houston than it was in New Orleans. Oh, but I'm a fear monger for asking questions. Well, if I'm a fear monger for waking people up and keeping people aware of what could go down here really soon. Guys, it's getting close. I mean, look at how close it's getting. Here shortly, you're not going to have much. And what happens is most people are going to wait until the last day, right? They're going to wait until the very end, and then they're going to start leaving. That's what they're going to do. The roads are going to be crazy. I remember just going back from Smith's Ferry, Idaho, to Boise on a one-lane road that was just sitting there. It was like five hours to get from Boise or from Smith's Ferry to Boise. I was fortunate enough to have a map, like an actual physical map, that I saw a dirt road that I was able to take off of this one area. Started a little town called started with a B Burley or something like that. It cut off there. Then I took this dirt road through multiple peaks in the mountains. It was amazing. And I was going through these old towns that were like people riding around on four wheelers and stuff. Only way to get there is by dirt road in the mountains, like nice towns. You can know, tell people looked out for each other. Reminded me of the good old days. <laughs> Where you didn't have to worry about locking your car. I mean, it's just, you know, people could protect themselves. And they were friends with the police out there. Well, they, like, they know them personally. Hey, how's it going, Ted? Good. How you doing, Bill? Excellent. Be excellent to each other, right? So I ended up getting back to Boise quicker than those people that had to wait in that one-lane road. And I drove through multiple mountains, several peaks that were over 10,000 feet, dirt roads, got back sooner, had beautiful scenery while those guys had to wait in line. Are you going to be that guy that's waiting in line? Are you going to be that gal that's waiting in line? Are you going to be that couple, that family waiting in line? While people are freaking out, honking at each other, yelling at each other, calling each other the worst names possible. People are flashing guns at each other, throwing bats at each other. Whatever. Who knows what they're going to do. You guys, two points away from what? That's right. Two points away. Two IQ points away from walking zombies. Don't be one of them. Please don't be one of them. Don't give yourselves a bad name. By being one of the zombies? Ah, but everybody's going to be fine. Nobody's going to get hurt. Uh, The islands, the Caribbean, the Dominican Republic, no worries. Cuba, no worries. Florida, oh, they're going to be just fine. Happens all the time, man. This happens every year, over and over again. It's going to be just fine. 
Well, time will tell. Time will tell. Tell that to the people in Houston. Tell that to people in Houston right now, please. Everything's going to be just fine. But hey, you know what? It's a beautiful day out here today in San Antonio. I didn't see any chemtrails. Went to the store, bought some water. Bought some bottled water. I want to know what's going on with the bottled water situation in Florida right now. Are people freaking out about that? We're out of water. We're out of water. Get a bucket. Fill it up at home. (laughs) While you still can. And get a water filter, too. So anyway, there you go. Maybe I'll take a a quick few days off or a couple weeks off in South Dakota. Do my shows out of the bunker there. That way, if something happens, then I can still broadcast shows to you guys. And hopefully you guys will be safe, too. So get a hold of me if you're interested in getting involved in Vivos in a 2,000 square foot approximate concrete bunker in a very remote location that could be turned into a pretty cool micro community. Be the change you want to see. Leakproject.com.